said I bought you, yeah We should roll a pound and count it, yeah Look at all these heads that I bought you, yeah Come and help me mount them Won't stop till my driveway got a fountain I done quit so many jobs, you would think that I'm a quitter Really, I need quick cash, I just need it quick fast So I hit that field till that kid got that big stash, shit You already know what it is. You're listening to the Urban Product. It's your boy DME. It's your boy Cozy Rich. And it's your girl Money. Facts. And we back on the Zoom here to give you another episode, a great episode of your favorite podcast, episode 95 to be exact. That means we're five episodes away from episode 100. That's going to be a huge milestone. I can't wait until we get there. That's going to be great. I know we got. Rich's two-year anniversary coming up. We got Amani's one-year anniversary coming up. So, yeah, good shit for the show. Good shit for the show. How's everyone doing? Um, I, I had a good day, you know what I mean? Just work, just trying to be productive. Other than that, just sipping on my hot And And, uh, yeah, just enjoying my day. How about y'all? Um, I've been good. I haven't been as productive. I've kind of just been on my phone. Well, not really on my phone. I've been reading and then watching a lot of um, anime. And I have been drinking just in, within the past hour my wine and other things that I have in my fridge. Am, am I the only one now sipping? Like, do yeah. I have to grab my bottle too? Damn, yeah. Nah, y- y'all don't want me to go like that. That would be a whole different podcast, you feel me? <laughs> you feel the vibes? You know the vibes, bro? Shit. Mom ain't raising no bitch. I'm out here. Start drinking as soon as we get off the clock, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, keep it a buck with me, though. Have y'all been dripping, drinking that, um, that new tequila that's, like, been overhyped on social media lately? Which like that, tequila? Like I haven't that seen blue any and white, tequila. That blue and white bottle, like that Azul. I think it's called, like, Azul or something like that. I haven't even seen it. Nah, I be, bro, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just been drinking Henny and Patron. That's of course, it. of course. Really I'm along with my Corona bottles. and White Claws, but I know what, what I'm talking about. I know what bottle we're talking. You're talking about. I partake in that because so I just I never it? drink that. I I don't drink that thing. You don't drink that on it, but I didn't drink that. No. Okay. But right, I, I saw yeah. the hype behind those bottles, and I just wanted to know. If it was worth it or not, you feel me? A lot of people have been telling me it's a female drink, but then you know I've been seeing every bro, brother bro, bro. The don't listen that. to that shit, bro. So I don't know. <laughs> bro, don't listen to that shit because I heard a, cr- a vodka cranberry is a female drink too, and that shit hits, bro. I'm drinking all the female drinks because they taste bomb. I don't give facts. A fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, yo, I'm telling you all the female drinks, bro. They taste good. Facts. See me in the corner with my bottomless mimosa. I might. Yo, feel me. <laughs> <laughs> But let's check in. Let's check in with the world because obviously we're here to keep the culture informed. Wait, nah, nah, real quick, real quick. I gotta yeah, tell the go fans. Ahead. I gotta tell the fans that I've had a stuffy nose all day. So if you see me blowing my nose, it's because I have a stuffy nose. Have you been wiping your ass? Um. Well, I haven't shit yet today. So, uh, but you know, every other day, yes, I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So back to check in on what's going on with the world. So. Uh, it's been a week since we last recorded, and it looks like the climate might have changed a little bit. We see people are still up here with the Black Lives Matter movement, still talking about protests. Hey, don't say still. Don't and, say um, still. It's no, no, no. I got it this way. No, no. Facts, facts. Um, let, me, let, me, let me flow. Let me flow into it. Let me flow into it. So we see that people are still um, posting about Black Lives Matter, still protesting all these things are great. We're now putting the focus more on Breonna Taylor, as I'm seeing, which is um, the next victim that we're demanding justice for. So that's great. But also, I said still because um, a lot of our counterparts make, makes it seem like they're not so heavy in the movement as they was a week ago. But here we are, another, another weekend protesting. Um, yeah, so how are y'all? It's another I mean, week I'm, I'm, I've been good, bro. Over the last couple, over the last week itself, I've been just happy as fuck to see what I'm seeing from social media, from celebrities, from public figures, from certain people in government. And I'm just loving what I'm seeing because I, I see that these protests are actually getting shit changed and getting shit done. Like I was watching the news this week and bro, they, they're, they're, intro- they're trying to introduce bills to limit pr- police brutality or how to, how to solve police brutality. So, I'm 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 in a pretty good mood, like because of this, and I, I'm 
earlier this week, I was a little upset because I didn't see, you know, as much Black Lives Matters or petitions or anything really going on as it pertains to the cause on social media. But as the week has picked up, I've seen, you know, people getting back to it. So I just yep. want to make sure everyone stays the course. We, we keep the same message because the only way we have to actually get some change is by keeping this up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's consistency. You just got to stay consistent. I hope this, I hope we keep this up until like December, bro. How about you, Amani? Um, I'm also excited to see that there has been a lot of focus on not only the black men who have been targeted, but the black women, as you said, yes. Taylor. Um, I love that a lot of people are speaking on like the discrimination or the bad treatments placed on black women within the medical field or just getting checked up. Um, just seeing a lot of stories of how I forgot the number, but it was a high number of women of color having their, you know, having their babies. And it was like more than likely that the woman and the child were going to die from mm-hmm. complications. Of- are, you, are you talking about how um, healthcare providers don't take into account like how black or don't pay attention to black people as much as they do as white people? Yes. Because I've been seeing like that, that some doctors like in med school, before, like while they're in med school, they believe that like black people have thicker skin and we don't, our nerves don't um, feel as much pain because of our nerve endings, which is fucking wild. But, I feel like most of the time it's an insurance reason also. Yeah. Whoever, for like, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's because that's what I see on TV a lot. I see a lot of like patients get ignored just because other patients are like their insurance or their bills are like higher. So they're putting more focus on them instead of the ones who maybe can't afford the best health care in the world. Even though, you know, it's illegal, you're supposed to care for everybody despite their situation. But. No, I know. I, I, I feel Some you, bro. Like that too. That, I like that Imani brought that up, though, because I, I want to say first and foremost that, yes, like this started with Black Lives Matter, but this isn't just about police brutality. This is about inequality everywhere in the world as pertains to, to black people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I say that, I mean education wise, I mean infrastructure wise, I mean housing wise, medically, as she said, as well as police brutality. And there's a lot of yeah all all of it bro it all needs to be fixed so we ain't talking about just you know fix police defund the police all that allocate funds elsewhere like nah we need we need widespread change and reform amongst all the fields so we can have an even playing field for years to come that's Mm -hmm. that's what it is so i just want people to understand that it's not just about police brutality it's about all of it what do each of you think about um people's idea of defunding the police as it, per- as it pertains to defunding the police, people, people have an issue with it because they're thinking we mean just take all the money away from the police. No. It's yes and no. So we're, we're, we're not going to take all the money away from the police, but what I want to do is limit or take some money away. Because, for example, New York City, right? Their police department has a $6 billion budget, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. With a B. What the <laughs> fuck does a... Why do they need a six billion dollar budget, bro? That doesn't make any sense. They'd be the thirty third biggest military in the world, just mm-hmm. off the bat with that budget. So, bro, imagine taking just split it in half, give them three billion, right? You can use the other three billion that you now have in places like education, pay mm-hmm. teachers, get office supplies, get better, get better equipment for the schools, infrastructure. You can improve work roads. You can improve buildings. You can. Build, you can build shit in cities that improve and add value to the city itself. Mm-hmm. What else? Medically. What do you mean? Bro, this, this can go anywhere. There's, so when, it, when it's defund the police, it's just not we're taking money away and not doing anything with the money we took. It's we're taking the money, we're taking some money away from the police. So Because, let's be honest, police officers, they don't need these armored cars like that. They don't need these military-grade weapons. First of all, their, their job is to de-escalate a situation. In my opinion, if that's your job, you shouldn't have that equipment in general because when is it really going to be necessary? Mm-hmm. You know I mean? That's what we got the National Guard for. So we don't, they don't need half that shit. So take, like I said, just take some, of the, take some of the money and put it in places where it can be useful and mm-hmm. where it, it would be useful, like homelessness. Imagine if we put $3 billion towards homelessness in New York City. You think shit wouldn't change, bro? People wouldn't be in better positions? Put $3 billion towards education? towards the medical field, 
towards infrastructure. I'm just saying, like it's not. Nah, you're spitting facts. That's, that's that's so that's what people mean when they say defund the police. But I know, like I be watching the news, people are like, we can't defund the police. We we can't just take money away from the police. That's not what we're talking about. And it gets me annoyed because it's crazy when they say we can defund Planned Parenthood. Everyone knows what the fuck they meant then. Everyone knows what defunding Planned Parenthood meant. But the minute we say we got to defund the police, and niggas want to get confused. That's the, that's the only issue I have with it. Mm. Got so, um, I kind of, you kind of like took like a lot of what I was thinking. <laughs> of. Um, nah, but I agree with a lot with what you're saying. I feel like people just have to understand that at this point in time, the role of the, you know, police stations, police officers in general has, like, they've gone over, they've crossed the line at some point. So they obviously, a reboot needs to happen. For whatever reason, money has gone into their systems, for whatever reason. I just feel like it's just one other way of having, like, an internal army. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you said, like, you're grabbing these military-grade weapons. That's not necessary. We already have, you know, things in place, such as the army, such as the... Um, what are these people called? Jesus Christ. Oh, who do we just Na- have? National Guard. Thank you. National Not Guard. True. Like We already have these people in, in place. So there's no reason for you guys to be giving money to police officers. Like, as Darnell said, they're supposed to de-escalate situations. They're supposed to protect and serve. They're not supposed to be out here antagonizing people. They're not supposed to be out here targeting people. They're supposed to be helpers of the society. Mm-hmm. So defunding i feel like in a way is kind of resetting the system because you're starting back from from square one you're giving money to to areas that obviously have been struggling as darnell said education um infrastructure and home um homeless people um in healthcare so it's like i don't see why everyone's making it as big as it is like it's going to do people so much better than actually is um which city was it it was camden in new jersey they started doing it and there has been new like reform there's been a reduction in crime yes reduction everything has just been off the chain since they've done that so granted i'm not gonna say every single city that's gonna work for it but obviously the the cities as as darnell said six billion for what six billion for what so what, what, what Amani was saying about Camden, New Jersey, in 2013, essentially, they um, de- defunded their police because uh, crime rates and all, like, police weren't doing their job, essentially. They weren't fixing it, right? So they defunded mm-hmm. their police, and over the last seven years, bro, their crime rate has dropped by more than 50%. Homicide rate has also dropped. Everything crime-related has dropped as a resu- result of defunding the police and allocating those expenses elsewhere. Now, my thing with defunding the police as well is the fact that if you defund them, they now don't have $3 billion extra dollars if we're cutting it in half, New York City, for example. They now don't have $3 billion to spend, right? So that means they're not going to waste money, bro. You know how much money they probably waste on stupid shit? Bro, I was watching the news this morning. In Methuen, the cops wanted to invest one hundred and fifty k just to make their shooting range bigger. Like, that's where money's going towards, you feel me? So I, I saw shit like that, and I'm just like, wow, that's where that's where taxpayer dollars are going towards, you feel me? I'm like, all right, you defund them. They're going to have to spend their money more wisely and on more important shit that they actually need, which is going to make them a better police force in the long run. So I think it just works out for all parties. It, it, I, really don't see the, I really don't see a downside from taking money from the police when they have all this money right now and shit isn't even going well, taking the money from the police and allocating it somewhere to, you know, in places where, you know, it could help society, help civilians, people that are exactly people that are in positions where they might need to, you know, commit a crime to survive, help those people mm -hmm. out and you won't need the police as much. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, when people hear defunding the police, they think it means like disbanding the police as a whole. And yeah, no, those are two different things. Obviously, you can't get rid of the police because if you got rid of the police, everything would just go to shit. Like we know this. We know this. But we're not talking about getting rid of the police. We're just talking about defunding it. So yes, like everyone was saying, allocating certain funds to other way where it can better benefit your community. Like if like I was talking about this um, 
with my cousin the other day about how so many other areas are struggling and they're just begging the government for more money and they just won't get it. But if the police force ask for something, mind you, when nothing's even crazy is going outside, it's not like we're in, it's not like we're at war or anything at all. Currently outside is canceled. So if you're giving more money to the police, like what, like what is it for? Like for, for that year, literally for the year 2020, what is all that money going to use for when everything outside is canceled? You feel me? And with that being said, also, like I was talking to my cousin about how like one area that needed more money, you can say like for education, for example, I talk about um, the inner city school system as a whole is just trash. It's just trash. And that's just because nobody wants to put money to that. Like, Nobody wants to put money there. So um, the facilities are trash. Teachers are underpaid. So it's not like teachers even care about being there or the fact that they want to work there. So you just have the education system as a whole. And of course, in inner city schools, what majority of the population attends those schools? Black minorities, you feel me? So it's just like, yo, if you see all of this happening and you're like thinking, huh, what can I do to like, how, when I, what can I do to help these people besides putting on kente cloths and kneeling on the floor in national television? Like, what can I do to actually help these people? You feel me? Take, listen to what everyone is saying, defund the police, and give it to other places where it matters if you actually care about the Black community. You feel me? That was just one example that I used. I, bro, I saw that Los Angeles PD had a Lamborghini cop car. For what? Brand new Lamborghini fuck a cop car. What? <laughs> for what? <laughs> like, yo, what does the police department need a Lamborghini cop car for? A fact. They also have a Tesla, Tesla cop car. For what? Yeah, Wasting money, you feel me? They don't, Bro, they don't need that shit for the cover. They don't. <laughs> my thing is like we've been doing we've been doing things this way forever. 400 plus years, you feel me? Police was created to find slaves. You know I mean, find mm-hmm. that's what that's the whole fucking reason for this police to begin with. So they're doing their job. They're doing what they were created for. But my thing is, why can't we try something new? Like, why is everyone so against defunding the police when we've never even really tried it? In the one place we have tried it in the U.S., it's actually fucking working. So I don't, I don't understand. Like, why can't we do like a three-year trial period? You know what I mean? Three-year no, trial yeah, period. Let's see, let's see how it goes in New York. You feel me? Let's try to disband the, or not disband, defund the police, allocate the funds some, somewhere else, and see what kind of good comes. You know what I mean? I guarantee you, I guarantee you only positivity will come from that. You know what I've like, what I've been learning throughout all of this? I'm like, wow, look how a group of people react when for the very first time you start taking away their power. Did like, you see that? Did you see that press the- conference? <laughs> Which one? The police, the police officer one, where he was like, "Oh, that we're getting attacked. They're 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 coming." (laughs) Where they they felt like black people for a day. Yeah, I was watching that entire thing, and I was like, "Damn!" Like, I know NYPD has mad cops. NYPD has mad cops. In that video, you will not find one person of color behind that person. You feel me? So clearly, whoever thought of giving that speech. They clearly don't know what it's like being a minority. But yeah, I agree with you. I was watching that video and literally every sentence he said, every sentence. Could have been a black person. Yeah, I was like, every sentence, I'm like, oh, we go through that. Oh, y'all do that to us. Y'all do that to us. They were talking about like, oh, um, no one's been been talking about the cops who died. Y'all seem to leave us out of that. And I'm just like, wow, that's like, that's like what this whole movement is about in terms of black people. And then I was like, yeah, the... The media has been vilifying us, making us sound like thugs. And I was like, wow, my phone just dropped. See, that's how you know. I was like, wow, (laughs) you're starting to feel how we feel and you don't like it. Wow. Crazy crazy how that works, right? Crazy how that works, right? (laughs) Of like them tying like what everything that he's saying, them tying it to certain things that's going on in protests. He just looked dumb. He looks Twitter so dumb, just, bro. Black, black dude at Twitter just did its job and made him even look 10 times worse. So, honestly... The uh, thing that fucked me up is the fact that, yes, it was all police officers, 
but it was all white. There was not one black police officer there in sight, bro. Facts. The no part that killed to, me. No one was there to tell him, yo, this might not be a good look. Like, yo, you might look, you might be a meme by the, the morning, bro. I don't think that's a good he look. He wasn't going to listen. <laughs> Regardless, even if someone was to do that to him, he wasn't going to listen. That dude was getting so tight based off how they're treating. And I was just like, yo, see, like, this is what happens when you take away their power. It's like, wow, you try to take away their guns, they get mad. You try to talk about police brutality, they get mad. You try to tell them that another person's life matters, they get mad. And it's just like, wow, okay. I'm not lie, bro. Now I'm just starting to see a shift to where it's just like, where, I've course, started like, um, throughout all this time. Um, like white people have been the majority and they've been the uh, superiority, and they've had all this power. And now, after all these years, it's like you're seeing everyone come as a whole to test that power, and people are just getting upset. So that's why I think people have problems with like defunding the police or anything because people are just upset that the majority's time is coming to an end. I mean, you're right. You're essentially right. That's that's all it is. Like. People just people aren't don't like change. You got to think about it. All the people saying they to not defund the police are what, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Right? Mm-hmm. Let you know they want the status quo. People don't like change, especially if change is going to affect them negatively. Everyone who is telling you not to defund the police knows what the fuck we mean. Mm-hmm. And I, I say that because when we were saying defund Planned Parenthood, well, not we. When they the government was saying defund Planned Parenthood. Niggas knew what that meant. Weren't playing stupid about that. So people just choosing what to what to understand right now. And I'm off. I'm not. I'm not listening to it. No, I ain't, I ain't paying these people no mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, did you see? I didn't. I wasn't even hit. Fucking lynching is not even illegal. It is now. No, but like it just became illegal. Like, oh yeah. This, yeah. Like recently, like. Couple weeks. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have laughed. That's how Imani just said. It is now. <laughs> no, but I'm like, they had. They really had to vote recently within the last week or two to make lynching illegal. Yeah. And you know what, what was, was crazy? What was, what was it crazy about it, bro? As before, bro. You only get ten years in jail if you get it. That's the max sentence. So if you murder, if you someone, lynch someone, if you lynch someone, you are only getting ten years max in prison. So. What's the difference between that and any other type of murder charge? Uh, murder one, you'll go to you'll go to jail for life. So what I have to choose a lynching was, wasn't premed. Wait, what, do I have to choose? Do I have to prove how a lynching was premeditated? Uh, you you always have to prove, no matter what. How, it is, you how a lynching was premeditated, bro? It's if you're lynching someone, you're pre- It's obviously bro, premeditated, bro. They put they put me on a tree, bro. <laughs> that just max happened. sentence. That didn't, max, that didn't just if you happen. get sentenced for lynching, bro, the max you can get is ten yeah, years. Where, I learned that this? today. Do you know where this is? Like where that it's, law passed? Is this uh, like the government? The federal government. Yeah. Oh, national. Oh, okay. The yeah, bro. Like government. I was watching. Um, I was watching. What's it called? The press conference. It was like a. It was a press conference between Democrats and uh, Republicans this morning. And uh, George Floyd's brother was there, and he was basically like telling them to make some changes and shit. And some lady was going off how we just made lynching illegal, like now. And that was that's that crazy. was a struggle to do. That was a struggle to even get lynching illegal. So I let you know how far behind the Americans are. Where the Facts. I wonder if the masses know that. I wonder if the <gasps> masses know that. No bullshit. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. I just had to share that information out. because I don't think anyone really knows that. Because lynching is not only a murder, but it's also like a hate crime. So the fact that like that just became illegal is beyond me. But I always feel like things don't change unless people speak up on it. So it's not. Yeah, honestly, I don't know how else to explain that. I feel like things don't change until it gets brought to light and forces people to change it. Like, for example, I was going to say, like, yo, like with all this shit going on, Black Twitter has been holding us down, bro. If you think about it, bro, Black Twitter has done more than any politician has <laughs> within the past, for, for quite some time now, you feel me? I'm just like, yo, think about it. Like, we're the ones that are reporting um, everything that's happening. We're the one that's literally providing the courts with all the video of, like, police brutality and shit like that. We're making you remember the people that died and all that. And, hey, we told... We heard that um, 
what was it? We heard in the UK they took a statue down. Yeah. Boston Twitter lets you know. Boston Twitter lets you know the locations. And what they, did we um, find they, out this morning? <laughs> oh yeah, they took Paul Revere's head off. Facts, bro. They took Paul Revere. Now nah, Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Columbus. Same yeah. shit, bro. They they all the same people. <laughs> Facts. They took Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Columbus's head off. I respect it. Hey, I was what just you gotta like, do? Hey, yo, I love Black Twitter. It's crazy how we all come together during. You gotta these understand, times. bro. Yo, Black culture keeps America afloat. Without black Facts. culture, there would be no America, bro. That's big. Facts. You gotta think about it. They still everything. Why do you from think us. this movement so? Why do you think this movement so big? Because we're the ones leading it, bro. We are the culture, bro. Like if you don't have black people, you don't have anything. Mm-hmm. We make shit so, popping. We get shit lit. So with all of these um laws and bills that are coming up, what are some laws that you would like to see implemented about everything? This whole police brutality. So case? for me, for me, my thing, the main thing I want is if. You are caught as a police officer. This is just talking about like police brutality and everything. If you're a police officer and you are caught being overly aggressive or doing something you shouldn't be, I want you to get investigated by an independent investigator not associated with the PD at all. And I want the people who are with you to be accused of the same crime as long like with you, like as an accessory, because they are there to de-escalate a situation. If they are there, if you are there and you are caught, for example, with, with your knee on someone's neck and your cooperating officers are with you and they don't do anything about it, I want them both being under investigation. I want them both being charged. Not, well, not charged, but investigated and then charged. You know what I mean? So I want everything to be done independently. I don't want any, I don't want investigations to be done by people affiliated with the police department that they're doing the investigation on. That's just a conflict conflict of interest so that's first and foremost i just want investigations to be done independently that's the main law or main thing i want to change as a result of this okay so i think for me personally i think the main thing to copy darnell the main thing for me would be like the process of becoming a police officer i feel like it should be more Stringent. thorough than what it is um, I feel like there should be thorough, thorough psychological testing, you know, making sure that there should be a huge amount of like work being put into background testing. Like there should be no reason why anybody should just be getting it. And then we're having all these like violations. And then now we have a George Floyd situation like this. That should never happen. First off, there should be no reason why a person with that many violations should still be a police officer. At That's that point, facts. he should have just been demoted or just fired, period. Three strikes, you're out. Three strikes, you're out, to be so honest. So that would be another thing. Like, if you have that many violations, there should be, like, I feel like if you have a violation, that should be, like, a reset button for you. You know how, you gotta like. You got to go back. You got to go back. You know retrain. how, like, retrain, go through the whole process over again so that not only is it a way to make sure that you're up there, you're set. I feel like it'll be another way to tell people, okay, you know what? I fucked up so that I don't do this again. It's a deterrent. I, yes. So that, those are the two things for me. So I would. Sure the process is as thorough as it should be. And if you do a violation, make sure that there is a, um, what is the word? Like a, like a, like a repercussion for what you did. Like you should, you should go back to school or you should go back to police training. You should go back through the whole background testing and the whole psychological testing and then have a, like a, a panel come together and make sure that if that's the right decision to bring you back on the force and still, if you're back on the force, go to desk duty first. Oh, I like that. Okay. I would, uh, to hop off what you said in the beginning, like, um, they, they need to take certain classes or they need a psycholo- psychological exam. I would say that they need at least an associate's degree to be, become a cop. You can't become a cop right out of high school. I need you to at least have taken a year of criminal justice classes and a year of psychology classes. Okay. I, I need you to do that because those types of classes will, one, get you ready. Well, not get you ready, but better prepare you for what you're about to get yourself into as well as inform you on things you need to be informed about like cognitive dissonance like um oh go ahead talk nice talk nice like the bystander effect like there's a lot of Mm -hmm. shit you you can learn from psychology that affects you in real life and 
you were to take psychology classes, you'll realize, oh, I'm doing this. I'm acting this way. I should not be doing this. So they need to at least have an associate's degree. I, I really believe that because better educated people think before they do. And that's a, what a lot of those police officers don't do. They don't think before they do. So they need at least a two-year degree. Hmm. So I read somewhere that they're actually trying to make it a law um, to make it illegal to film the police. They were doing and, that in Arizona. In Arizona. Yeah, yeah. facts. Yeah. Facts. And I'm just going to say, if that ever passes, more people are going to die in your city or state. I'm just going to say, more people are going to die and no one's going to know about it if that happens. Because you know the only the reason the why this is? police brutality cases are being brought to the public at all is just because the public is the one recording it. You feel me? The fucked up yes, part about that is that um, if you do record someone and you end up having to go to court, you can't use that video in court as evidence. Yeah, so change the laws around all. I would love to change the laws around that. And um, I would also like to change the law. Well, not m maybe change the law, but make people aware of the law because I wasn't aware until somebody put me on. But if I am the one being detained, and I feel that my life is in danger, um, that my life is in danger and I am complying. Apparently there's a law that's saying you have every right to defend yourself if you feel like your life is in danger. Now I saw that in Massachusetts. I don't know what it's like in other states, but I feel like I would want people to be more aware of that. And if it's not like that in other states, maybe make it more like that. Because when I see a lot of cases of these police brutality, um, you know, it's homies, com like homies complying, he's doing everything he has to do until, you know, he ultimately dies. And I feel like if you make a law where I can defend myself until like the whole situation is de-escalated, that would be cool. Or if you see a, bi or if a bystander sees what's going on, and he sees a person's life's in danger. I would also like to make it a rule that I could get involved and no charges would be brought up against me. I would love that. Because I feel like if you do that, there won't be any more bystanders. I feel like if you get rid of the fact that if you become involved, you can get in trouble. If you well, just get rid of that, I feel like you The thing with laws, though, is that you need it to be really, really, really specific. Because mm -hmm. at, well, we're, we're making because, it like for example, for example, like I can intervene, but I could intervene by like pushing this nigga, or I can intervene by snuffing this nigga. So you need the language, and you need the language written as in as in like really specific to what, like how you can intervene. What is just the defending? Just like defense. That's like like I said, bro. Like I, like I could defend that. someone with the with the golf club. I could defend someone with my fists. I could defend someone with a gun. If it's I got a, if I have to snuff the hell out of a cop just to save somebody else's life i want and then to it be becomes cool subjective, to do that. But that becomes subjective <laughs> as well brody because you got to think about it that's you thinking this person like this situation is getting out of hand the cop could think i have this under control you know what i mean so it's really subjective that's why every cop thinks it. they have it under control until they kill somebody and that's why they get away with it that's why i'm saying that shit that needs to be changed yeah but it's the language like you yeah would, i hear you that would be really hard just because i took business law class bro and Legitimately, the word the, a, or, and, those little words can switch up the entire meaning of the law. Just those little words. So it's like, it's really important how you word it. But uh, I, I know what you mean. We do need something like that. Yeah. yeah. And like, and like protocol. I feel like protocol needs to change too. Like what you're supposed to do when you're pulling somebody over or like when it comes to calling for backup, what you're supposed to do. I feel like a lot of the protocols got to be worked on as well. To be quite honest, even Bro? like, even with um the way the store handled the whole, handled George Floyd, like I've worked in plenty of retail. I've worked in food. I've worked in a lot of jobs. Darnell has also worked in a lot of jobs. Where it's just like when a situation like that occurs, you're supposed to, you're supposed to call the police, but you're supposed to call the police to file a report. Yeah. So if someone approaches, if someone comes up, if someone's stealing from your, your store, if someone's um, trying to give you fake money, you don't go and try to like grab the person. You know what I'm saying? You don't try to do the police's work. Instead, you call the police, 
You have them come in, you file a report with them. Then you file a report with the company of the business. And then from there, they will conduct an investigation. You don't allow the man to leave or you don't get into it with the man and then have and then call the police on him and say, oh yeah, he did X, Y, and Z. And then that ends up being the reason why he lost his life. So you're right about the protocol thing. I feel like all people, it's not just cops. I feel like all people should go back to their employee handbooks and understand when it comes to situations like that, you need to handle it carefully because now those people, whoever called the cops on him, I hope they feel everything on their shoulders because a little stupid situation that they felt like they had to go that route just ended in, in somebody, you know, losing their life. And it's unfortunate. So mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. protocol has anything to do with this because I guarantee you right now, them, like them pulling you over and then them coming up to your car window with their gun pulled on you is not protocol. Like I guarantee you that's not protocol. They're not trained to do that. So mm -hmm. they can, they can learn all the protocols they want. It's just up to them whether they follow it. So that's where the repercussions come in. Like, yo, if you're caught doing this, like you're fired type shit. But um, my, the one thing I would change, and I, I just realized this today. So all right, I learned this today. There's 1,800 different police departments in the country. 1,800. There is 1,800, 1,800 police departments in this country. Okay. Each police department has their own set of rules. They all operate differently. Mm -hmm. They all need to be held under the same fucking standards. I, I think that's the problem right there. We all we need to hold them all to the same standards because what they're doing in New York, they got to do in Wyoming. I don't give a damn. I really don't give a damn. You got to make it. You got to make it the same countrywide because if I go, if I leave from Massachusetts and I go to Florida, I expect them to operate the same way that they do in Massachusetts. I don't expect Massachusetts cops to be nicer than Florida cops. Not. I want to be able to be safe wherever I go. I don't want to be. Because in Florida, like that standard ground law, for example, people could just shoot you if they feel threatened. Hmm. Like, I, I don't want to go down to Florida and then deal with a situation to have to call the police and then they come at me because I'm a black man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I want, I want, I want there to be a, like a, a, a wide ranging or not wide ranging. I want there to be one rule book for all the police departments to follow. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why that couldn't be, why that shouldn't shouldn't be a thing. Like, yeah, I don't like you, why each police department makes their own rules. That makes no like sense. You, to me. Like you want some of the um, police laws to be federal instead of just state. Yes, they need to be federal, bro. Yeah, they need to be. Mm -hmm. That's that's big facts, though. Because like, bro, because it's weird. Because if I like, if I were to go from to New York, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. It is completely different how they're going to interact with you, how they're going to treat you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that. That's just uncomfortable. I don't feel I don't feel safe knowing that it's going to be a different experience. Uh, it should be the same everywhere you go. That's how people say feel safe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I also think you need to put more representatives up there as well. Representatives like as in like more black also people? like in the police force. I'm confused. Like, what do you mean? Like, like the ones that um are making these laws or like. So, oh, okay. Police right. captains. The politicians. Like, yeah, like just people of authority. Just like um, authoritative figures, you need more black re representatives and making your laws. And um, if someone's making like a police handbook, whoever's the police captain or sheriff in that like city, county, town, whatever, I feel like you need more black representatives up there. That's because the they would let you know if some shit just is, is isn't a lie right. you feel me like for example one thing that i had like one really common thing that i don't like about the police and i feel like it's majority wow well, majorly targeted towards black people the idea of stop and frisk like that whole idea even though with the good intention it might have i just feel like it will always put black people um, at a disadvantage you feel me but yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you just have more people in that position of power, you might be able to see some real change in how people operate day to daily on the. On I could the come course. up for I could come up for days about like shit shit that the police could change, rules that they need implemented, but 
we we got to actually see what the what the government does, what is actually enacted, because they're the ones that make the laws. So let's see if they're listening to us. That's all I can say on that. All I can say on that is that um, what I didn't realize, because I took political science last semester, so what I didn't hey. realize is actually really hard to get new officials within the government because some, um, like I think it's in the Senate, don't, you know, quote me on this, but um, I believe in the Senate, like certain people, no, it's not the Senate. I forgot what it was. There's a there's a couple positions within the government where, when they're posi- when they're appointed that position, that's their that's their position for life. And it in House of Representatives. So, so it's like if they the only way for them to ever really like, you know, be out of that position is if them themselves voluntarily quit, or if um. I'm pretty sure that's senator. They get voted out for whatever reason. And that's like, senator. That's crazy. And I feel like that that's 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 like one of the things that I feel like should be changed because um at the end of the day you just having the same people over and over again yes it's it's I guess it could be good because they can have an outlook on the older you know ways of of how things were set up and then to bring it back to how it's made up present day but at the same time keeping being you know diverse in terms of what representatives representatives that we have would be much better than just having people who just hear over and over again. There's no change in any in the thought process and the mentality. It's just the same thing over and over again. So I do want more res, representatives, but that's also that could be a reason why it's so hard to see a lot of like black people or, or people in ge- or different people other than white people be held or be appointed these positions because they have clauses like these where you have to be there long term. Or they just have people in their pocket that just keeps them in that position. Bro, just fire Nancy Pelosi. That's all I'm going to say. She's been there too damn long doing nothing. <laughs> like, that's all I'm going to say. She's a, she's a walking example of what she just spoke about. Nancy mm-hmm. Pelosi been there for like 30 fucking years. Can't do shit. Can't get shit passed. Just get out of, get out of the Senate House. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay. I, I 100% agree with you, Amani. Yeah. So I'm all speaking about um black representatives real quick. I just want to give a little shout out to um the mother of Trayvon Martin. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um mother of uh, Trayvon Martin just uh announced her campaign for office in Miami. You know, she's running for mayor. So shout out to her for that. You know, five years later that woman been through a lot and now she's trying to invoke some real change. So just wanna give a quick shout out to her, you feel me? Um, and then with that being said, even though all of this is going on, we still are in the middle of a global, global pandemic. Uh, hopefully all of y'all have been staying safe, but now we're starting to see no, states are reopening. I've been staying safe. Don't you see birds? You see birds? Yo, yo. I'm talking about see birds like, being real active. Being, yeah, people getting real thirst, you know, they're getting real lit with each other. They're getting the Airbnbs. I see people taking trips. Go off. Y'all can be the first wave. I'll be the second wave. Let me know how that works out. <laughs> hey, um, I sacrificed myself in the barbershop, so I already know that. <laughs> nice. What were you about to say, Rich? Um, I, I honestly forget. I'm sorry. Yeah, cool. So it's all right. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Coronavirus is still oh, going on. Hopefully I remember. y'all been safe. All right, go ahead. Yeah, just jump right yeah, in. Yeah, we, we in a pandemic, but this weather is making all the birds come out, bro. I've been hearing a lot of birds chirp lately. Well, I ain't right, fucking with it. Fill me in. Fill me in. What's up? I, I heard this one bird, B. Simone, bro. She was preaching about how nine to fives ain't it. How, how she can't fuck with a nigga with a nine to five. And I couldn't mm. help but laugh with her soldier boy eyebrows, but... That shit had me dying, because, like, isn't she working for Nick Cannon? Oh. <laughs> bro, isn't she working for Nick Cannon? She don't even have her own business, bro. I'm still she, thought, she clowning niggas on a nine-to-five? Yo, she could get fired tomorrow and be broke. I'm mm. so confused. Don't kill me. So you boy eyebrows are so hilarious. boy's eyebrows. <laughs> nah, facts, man. Niggas back in the day got the soldier boy eyebrows with a double lineup. Real niggas bro, that's the, the double lineup. <laughs> she got the soldier girl. She out here. 
right. So, yeah, I guess we can jump into B. Simone. I, how y'all feel about her? So, well, for people that don't know what we're talking about, she went on Nick Cannon's um, morning show, and Nick Cannon was pretty much just talking about her preference in men. And B. Simone, who's a comedian, IG model, whatever you want to call her. Bird. Um, Professional she bird. She said that she prefers to have an entrepreneur type gentleman no nine to five person because when she wakes up at 3 a.m and she has stuff that she needs to do she wants somebody that understands that now we can open up the floor to everyone to see what y'all think of nine to fives i need to hear imani because she's the woman here i need to hear okay sure go ahead I don't and really just know like- if we come at you, we're not coming at you. We're just coming at the idea, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't agree with it. To be quite honest with you, I didn't watch all of it because I felt like the more she kept saying, the more I didn't agree with it. Like it just didn't make sense to me. And then she tried to go on multiple lives after the fact, trying to reiterate what she said and make it seem like it wasn't what she said when. In all actuality, mm-hmm. what she said was just straight, like, dumb shit. First mm-hmm. off, the majority of the people that she... First off, yeah, the majority of the people that she works with were nine to five people. majority of the people that she was, like, you know, going crazy over was a nine to five person. So her mm-hmm. talking about how she can't be with a nine to five person, that don't make no sense to me. And then for her to yes. say, oh, she's taking phone calls at three in the morning, a nine to five person not going to understand that. What? What are you talking about? Facts. That's all they do. <laughs> That's all they do is answer. My that. thing. My thing is, she works for Nick Cannon, bro. Yeah, I could understand. Cool. I could understand if you had your own business and you was like a grinder, like, bro. She was broke up until like three years ago. What the Facts. Fuck is- and she and she got her own business now and it's doing well now, but it hasn't always been like that. You feel me? You feel me? She got it's doing well now because she got clout. That's all it is. So my thing is like. What the, who the fuck is she? That's yeah. all it was. Like me, when I read when I was watching, I was like, oh, who's B Simone? Because I ain't ever heard of this person until yesterday. You know, yeah. Simone? you know all the IG, you know all the I, IG. I, I don't, I don't know any of the IG models, bro. I, I really don't. Is she an IG model? Like, does she have a nice body? Because uh, I figured she, you would have knew her because of the baby, like they and their little. I Wait, she fuck with the baby? No, 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 no. Let me just no. give you the rundown. Okay. So B. Simone is an Instagram comedian turned um hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. Instagram it, comedian? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of Instagram model, but like oh, so you're talking about like the niggas that are trying to be actual comedians but do it through Instagram. Okay. So okay. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Instagram comedian who eventually became an um entrepreneur, has her own book and her makeup line. And she got hired to be on Wild and Out. Cause she, she's a comedian and she does stand up. She Martin Lawrence took her on tour, blah, blah, blah. So like her official title is comedian, business entrepreneur, but that shit, she wasn't always like that. You feel me? Like she just recently started making like, is it she about to turn 30? Um, I think she turns 30 already. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I ain't paying her no mind. She's just a bird. Yeah. She's just a bird with a, with a, with a platform. Yeah, but how do you think about what do you think about females with that mindset? Well, women. With that I mean, mindset. females with that mindset, unless like you're your own boss and you have, if you've always been that way, I completely understand it. But mm. I can't understand a nigga shitting on where they used to be. You feel me? Like mm. I can never shit on a nigga from like if I were to get rich, I would never come at a nigga from a nine to five because I'm currently working at nine to five. I know what that takes. I know what it's like. I Thanks. can't hate on you. I'm able to support myself. That's a respectable job. It's a respectable thing. Not everyone can be. Freaking rich in a celebrity, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So I ain't never gonna come at someone. From. But like her, it's just the way she came off. She sounded like yo, she sounded real snotty. Like yo, she's been, this, she's been like this. I'm like hey, you just got me. She trying mm-hmm. to make it better too. Like, mm-hmm. You ain't even cute. That's the part that killed me. I was like, that's the worst part about it, bro. I went on the video and I was hoping this girl was gonna be gorgeous, sexy. I was like, I was like you really got them eyebrows at thirty, and you talking about nine to five? Don't kill me. <laughs> nah, you a bird. You well, a bird, bro. I can talk. Um, since we are three entrepreneurs, no quotation. Get those quotations out of here. Since we are three uh-huh. entrepreneurs, um, what's it called? Yeah, that was gross. <laughs> I can say right that 
people with that mindset, I never understood people with that mindset because I'm just like, first of all, one, a lot of people with that mindset don't do anything in real life. So it's like, you literally want someone so you don't have to provide anything but pussy. It's like, it's crazy. But two, also the people that have that mindset don't really want the entrepreneur. They just want the successful entrepreneur. (laughs) That's what people got to realize as well. It's like, okay, yeah, you might want somebody who hustles and um, get is on their grind, but like, are you willing to be there before they make it? Or do you only want to be there when they make it? That's the real question. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I know plenty of nine to five niggas who are also entrepreneurs. Facts. So I was really I, confused when she said that. Like, I myself facts. consider myself an entrepreneur, bro. I look for yeah. other streams of income all the time. I invest in the stock market, bro. I have investment accounts like i'm tr- i try to be an entrepreneur so uh, she a bird yeah and it's like i get like a but preference don't. is a preference i get it but i'm just like hey yo fam like just don't that forget is. where you came from don't forget where you came from yo that's all that's all i think that's why a lot of people were like shitting on her because yeah we've seen mad people with um that mindset but i think it's just because a lot of like b simone's fans literally watch her watched her blow up so it's just like hey yo fam a couple years ago shit was not like this bro don't don't think shit's sweet you feel me <laughs> so i think you just you just gotta remember that when we got the receipts on your ass you can't just be talking nice all of a sudden because you was dating bums b you and you was me? cool with that and you was cool with that because you were also a bum and nothing's wrong with that but just because you're a bum now don't go shitting on these other bums you were a bum <laughs> so i don't know yeah, I'm tired of be small. She she a bird. bird. Yeah, and that was like that was like her second flop within like two weeks. Her first flop was her stance on um like the rioters and shit. She tried saying that like, oh, um, well, first of all, I'm a follower of like God. Like during any of these situations, I would I'm gonna ask what would God do, not what what uh angry black woman would do. I was just like, oh, B. Simone, you fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But it's just another instance of showing that, like, yo, it's not, you don't always got to speak up. Now people are asking you to speak up, but we're starting to see why these people haven't been speaking up in the first place. Because they got a lot of stupid shit to say. (laughs) Uh, Not utilizing their platforms, you feel me? But I wanted to go back. Yeah. I'm wavy. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Um, I want to go back into um, all the states reopening and us kind of ushering into this new normal. Um, Well, we're trying to get to this new normal. How are y'all feeling about that? Jobs opening back up, travel starting to. Well, I can tell you right now that 20 states are already seeing coronavirus like increases. So I can tell you right now this isn't going to last. To keep it a buck since this has happened, I haven't really been hearing about corona cases. Well, you got to understand, like, the protesting is taking over the news. Like, that's all. You, you'll hear about corona early in the morning because they'll always give you an update. And that's how I, like, re- like, that's what I do. Like, I wake up at 6 a.m. and I just I listen to the news while I work out and shit. And, like, 20 states, bro, have a serious increase in coronavirus patients and deaths. All so, those uh, states, were they states that were reopening? There are states that reopen, yeah. Reopen. They reopen faster than us. Yeah. We're yeah, Boston so. or like Massachusetts, for the ones that don't know, we're currently on phase two yeah. of reopening. Um, but it was states like majority. Arizona, it was states like Texas, Georgia, um, Washington, shit like that, bro. Like, there, there's some big states where they're, they're like, yeah. I know Arizona, for example, they had to put um, an emergency emergency uh thing for their hospitals like yeah we're on emergency uh i don't i forget but just know like, like we're gonna be on lot- patients is that what you're saying exactly they're getting they're getting too many patients and it's getting to that point where like yeah we're about to be on so it's it, bro we're gonna be on lockdown again in like another week. yeah you i heard think about it though, to be another outbreak in the fall and this is going to yeah these protests and everything like it's yeah, it's for a great cause, but it's going to have a negative effect as well. Like, we're all really close together and shit. People are getting sick. It's just going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, th- we're going to be dealing with the coronavirus until next year, I guarantee you. I mean, yeah, it's scary. scary. 
I don't have anything to say else on on states reopening because can't really control it. It is what it is. But I just know, bro, by August we'll be on lockdown again. And that's that's wild. Because school will not. Be and that don't mean, bro. I like it though, because I like working from home. So I ain't upset. That's cool for you. You at home, you working. You yeah, like, like my dude, still. my dude didn't lose his job. Like you know he, he's moving like, into like a crib. He you had get, like yep. three cars. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like everything's <laughs> working well for you. But like for myself, I have to think. Oh, so I'm about to be in this house again. Ten minutes. Oh, like three. Excuse me. Ten minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I'm about to be in this house for another three to four months on top of doing schoolwork, top of losing my mind. I'm not ready for it. I need to be out. Granted, I feel like if I was going back to school, I wouldn't really leave my phone, my room anyway. So I don't, I don't know. I'm like, in. You ain't going back to school in the fall. I tell you that right now. No, I don't, I don't think I'm going back to school in the fall. I already said this all. My friends, they're really like. Southern New Hampshire University at D2 school canceled all classes for the fall. It's all I know it's going to happen. I don't want to that president. But then again, Boston College said they're going to let students come in for the fall. Which it's doesn't make sense, though. Because it's only June. B, it's only June. BU, BU said that they're not opening at all, so I don't know why they went and did that, but go off. Anyway, what music dropped, Dev? All right, so, yeah, for, so for new music, um, we haven't really gotten much, honestly. We know that Pop Smoke is dropping this Friday. Supposed to be dropping this Friday. Uh, we haven't really heard any news from it, but it was announced a while ago that it was dropping June twelfth. So we're just hoping that it's staying to that date. I guess. No, it is dropping tomorrow. Okay, it's cool. Fifty Cent is supposed to be the executive producer of the album, um, and with one of the tracks that leaked, apparently it's a track that is supposed to have Burner Boy on it too. That track, when I listened to it, I was like, ah, okay. I can see 50 Cent has his hands on <laughs> I can see how 50 Cent has his hands on everything. Like, this sounds really 50 Cent-esque. And the fact that Pop Smoke is right under it, I'm just like, okay, I might, I might fuck with this tape. You feel me? Um, so that's cool. Other things that came out, I'm trying to... Um, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy yes. the President. Yes, Sleepy Hollow dropped his tape. Bro. You know what's yeah. crazy? I thought him and Chef G were the same person. Were the same person. <laughs> nah, they just, they just, uh, their they flows are like very it. similar. Yeah, the flows <laughs> in, the, in the Brooklyn accent is heavy. Bro, they Brooklyn. sound exactly alike, bro. The Brooklyn accent is I had to so Google, heavy. like, are Sleepy Hollow and Chef G two different people? And they showed me a picture of them. They look so different. They don't even look alike. It's crazy. Yeah, but their voices are exactly the same, bro. I don't care. Yeah. Facts. Like, you know, you know that song Breaking Bad that they dropped, like, maybe last year yeah. or some shit the like that? The same person, bro. <laughs> fact, uh, they be hopping back and forth. To this day, I don't know who raps ooh, which ooh. part, bro. <laughs> yeah. I know who's who in real life, but in that song particularly, I'm just like, yeah, tell. nah, I, I got to wait for Chef to go, look. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, okay, that's Chef. <laughs> nah, but I fucked with the album, though. Well, I fucked with half the album. The beginning, the first six songs were better than the last six songs. Mm. I'll say that. Like, the first three songs went crazy. Like, the freestyle, the freestyle he had at the beginning should have been longer. The deep end? Yeah, deep end freestyle should have been longer. Because that beat, that beat went crazy. Mm-hmm. Go walk the deep end, go. Oh, yeah, yeah, that shit that was, shit. That shit was going crazy. Different. Nah, that shit goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I fuck with the album, but I, I give it, like, a 7 out of 10. It wasn't anything crazy. I always fuck with half of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still think they're a uh, new cat, so they got time, but they got time. They're going to be the the artists where I feel like by their, like, fourth project, they're going to be dropping, like, heat. You feel me? Like, it's, they're gonna, their come up is similar to, like, uh, I feel like their come up is going to be similar to, like, Lil Baby. Like, they're hot because they're young. They're going to hop on all this little shit, but then when they have time to actually grow and learn the game, Cause they got flow and they got bars time to time. So when they got t- when they actually take the time to develop their craft, they're gonna be a problem in a few years, bro. They're gonna be a problem, and I know they're gonna be a problem because they were doing all this before Pop Smoke even came out. You feel me, bro? So there were SoundCloud rappers, rappers before this. Sound- I'm hip. There were SoundCloud rappers, and I was following yeah. them on SoundCloud. No, I'm hip, but I'm saying like their sound because like this whole Brooklyn drill shit. Even though Pop Smoke is the one to. Uh, that was the I one that kind of made it popular. Like, Chef G and, like, Sleepy, they were doing that before Pop Smoke even blew up, you feel me? So I give them their credit when it comes to that. Like, they're, they're really, like, the masters of their own craft. So I, I give them that, and I can't wait to see um, 
what they do in the future. Honestly, that's going to be dope. Meek Mill um, dropped a single. Yeah, Other Side of America. Obviously, to it. really dope track. Really dope track. You know, during like these times of protests and anything against them, um, the justice system, you know, Meek is going to be right there. Meek is going to be right there. You feel me? So, yeah, very dope track. Beats crazy. I don't know. There's nothing more I can say about it. It's Meek. You feel me? I'm going to listen to it after this. Facts. And text me after because you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fuck with that track heavy. Um, I feel like I don't want to talk about 6 9 so I'm not going to. I'm not talking about 6 9 bro. I'm not yeah, giving him I won't. Airtime. I won't. I won't. So I'm just not going to. <laughs> but the fact that I just said his name, people go do your research to see the type of bullshit that he got going on right now. It's crazy. All right. Um, I don't think I have any more to add to this episode, unless if y'all do. Nah. All right. Shall we go into our reality checks then? Yeah. yeah I would like to, first and foremost, well, I'm going to keep my reality check short and sweet. Straight to the point. Re- my reality check is this. If you are a supporter of the Black Lives Matters movement, keep posting, keep promoting, keep talking, keep having conversations about everything going on. That's the only way we're going to get shit to change. I don't want right. this shit to die. So I want it to keep, keep, I want this movement, movement to keep going on. So keep talking about it, keep promoting, keep posting, and have conversations. That's my reality. Facts. Check. Hashtag Black Lives black still black. matter. Still matter. Always you matter. Me? <laughs> Facts. Um, Mani, how about my, you? My reality check is to remind people to stay safe and to, as as well as Darnell said, you know, keep protesting, keep the movement, you know, going strong. But be safe at the end of the day because we are still in a pandemic. There is still a virus going on coronavirus hello so i just ask that everyone try and be as safe as possible but also keep the movement going that's it and then for my reality check i'm just going to say to um know where to find your peace okay so with all this going on you might feel like you don't got people to talk to or you might feel like because of the quarantine you're stuck in an area or a situation where you can't really be yourself or express yourself. And that's kind of making you feel like you're going mental, but you're not, you feel me? You're just getting used to the situation. But I think it's very important that during those times, you know where to find your peace, whether that's a nice little beach that you like going to to clear your mind, whether it's taking a drive, taking a walk or something like that. Um, or just linking one of your favorite people, you feel me? If you got to do that in order to get your mind off of everything that's going on right now, please go ahead and do that. You feel me? 2020 has been too crazy of a year. We've had to deal with so much shit, and we haven't even gotten a break. We haven't gotten a break since December, bro. It's crazy. So most of the time, people need to vent. So go ahead and find that place where you do that, and... We just got to keep going because life moves on. You feel me? We can't get caught behind. You feel me? Once, when, when this year is over, we just got to do our best to move on and keep pushing. That's all we can do at this point. You feel me? So that's my reality check. And that was pretty much the end of this podcast. Uh, thank you to everyone who continues to support us during this time. Season four has been an interesting season. So, yeah, that's all I can say for that. So shout out to everyone that's been supporting us through all this. You feel me? Season five going to be crazy. Just wait. Just wait. Season five. Fair beat. Fair Facts. All right. So it's been your boy, DME. It's been your boy, Cozy Rich. And you've been listening to the Urban Products. We'll catch y'all next time.